Hey everybody, it's Cliff from Enochian.today, and today I'm going to go over the Enochian alphabet, talk about the names of the letters, the pronunciation of the names of the letters, as well as the IPA pronunciation of the letters, as well as the obvious sounds that the letters make. In fact, we'll start with that. So I've just done my best to draw out, and you can see the Enochian alphabet online. You can look at the different names of the letters, and I'm going to be using uh, the pronunciation by Aaron Leach uh, uh, from his book, The Angelical Language, volume two in particular. In this case, he has two volumes. I do recommend both of those, so please support your authors and go ahead and uh, buy these books. But we'll start off first with just some basics about what each of these headings is, and then I'll go into the pronunciations and all of that. So the Enochian letter, this one is what it looks like if you were to write it out in Enochian. But the sound it makes is B, you know, the letter B. Okay, so it's basically the equivalent of the English letter B, but there is some variation in spelling that, so that you can't always just say, well, it looks like this in English. Sometimes it's going to be make a different pronunciation from what you would expect. And of course, back in John Dee's day, they hadn't exactly standardized spelling. So even John Dee's English spelling of the Enochian spelling was different uh, from how we might spell that today. So at any rate, so this is the letter B, and it kind of has some similarities to the actual you know, English letter. But it makes the B sound, right? But the name of the letter, you know, if we were to spell it out, it would be B-E-E, -E, right? For B, you know, that's how we would spell it, or B-E maybe. But the name of the letter is not B, but it's rather Pa. So the letter name is actually Pa. And in Aaron Leach provides this helpful pronunciation guide, and he puts it listed as Pa, just the same way, like Mon Pa Kent, if you are a fan of Superman. And then the IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, it's the same thing, right? So then we come to the next letter, and this letter is V, that's the name of the letter, but it's used to uh, show the K sound, okay? So the Enochian letter V makes the K sound, like a C or a K in English. And Aaron Leach's pronunciation is just like that. Uh, and this is, by the way, the spelling of the letter, spelling it out. So just to be clear, Enochian letter, the way it is spelled in English, and then the pronunciation of that spelling. Okay, so this will not always be consistent. So just bear with me here as we go along. So ve, you know, it's sort of, you know, I think fe is sometimes is something you might hear in Yiddish, but this time it's ve. So the Enochian letter, this is the Enochian letter ve. It makes the k sound, sometimes the c sound. Again, the same phonetic spelling that Aaron Leach uses, it's identical. But here we have the IPA spelling. And by the way, I do uh, know some people who uh, actually know IPA, so I beg their forgiveness if I have made a mistake here, but I'm pretty sure this is the, way, the international phonetic alphabet spelling of that sound. The next one here we have is Jed. It's spelled in English G-E-D. You can also spell it, by the way, you can transliterate the, these letters. So this would actually be Jed, and then the Enochian letter for E, and the Enochian letter for D, etc. You could actually make that. So it would be Jed, and then this, and then this, to spell that out. Same way I would say B is B-E-E. -E. Same thing you can do here. You know, you just transliterate, you know, change, swap out one letter for the, for the you know, swap out the English letter for the Enochian letter, it would make the same spelling, okay? But the sound the that Jed makes is either G, G, or J sound, either one. And I've seen it both ways. Uh, I've seen Jed, Jade for one of the names of God, and I've also seen just G, Gaho, Achna, or something like that, okay? So either one. So again, this is letter Jed, you spell it this way, or you and if you wanted to transliterate it back again into Nokian, you know, G E D like that, um, and then but it's pronounced Jed. If you ever watch American television, you can watch the Beverly Hillbillies, and there's Uncle Jed, right? And then here is the way you would spell that out in IPA. This makes the J sound, 
D. Okay, moving along. So this is the Enochian letter gall, but it makes the D sound, okay? So gall makes D or D, you know, our, our English letter D makes the same sound. And again, gal, actually I think this is gal, so I apologize for that. It's actually gal, you know, what a, what a fancy gal, you know, you might, you know, slang for girl, you know, in American English. Same thing, so gal and gal, okay? Next one is the Enochian letter or. It makes the f sound. It's equivalent to the English letter F. And again, or, or. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> yes, or. It's that. Okay. So I'm I'm not fluent clearly in uh, IPA. So, but that's the or sound if you were to make IPA. Okay. So moving right along. Here's the Enochian letter un. It's the equivalent of the English letter a. But it's spelled un just like this, and makes the un sound. And then here, uh, oops, uh, n. Okay. Next one is grafa. Okay, so this one is weird. It's spelled graf or graph. Excuse me. It's the equivalent to the English letter e, but it's spelled graph. But it makes the grafa sound okay and that ch i'm using it's not the ch sound it's the ch sound like you might hear in german or hebrew or other languages where they have the ch, ch like the loch ness monster it's not the lock it's the loch ness monster okay so anyway this is this word is pronounced grachfa grachfa okay and then here we have gra and then this x stands for ch and then fa grachfa Okay, so just, you know, just try it out, keep pronouncing it, stuff like that. Uh, this is the letter tall. It makes the m sound. It's equivalent to the English letter M, but it's called, it's called tall. And actually, it's, it's spelt out tall, but it's actually tsal. Okay, so if you look at the Hebrew letter tzadi, T T Z A D D I is sort of the English transliteration. Tzadi, it's like that. So it's, uh, and I apologize for that. It's actually only one L. So that's a typo. Oh well, should have brought my thing. So it's actually T A L. Ignore this other L, please. It's like that. <laughs> so English letter, it's it's spelled T A L. It's pronounced. The letter's name is pronounced Saul. But it's equivalent to the English letter M, okay? So if you were to, you know, want to spell out, um, let's say, the word joy, you would have to go M-O-Z, right? So, it, you know, that's the, that's the, the Enochian word mos for joy. Uh, or there's divine joy, which, which is liter it's uh, M O Z O D. That's mozod, and that the zod, z o d. It was the way that um, that letter was spelled out. Uh, and I, I am an American, obviously, because I said z. That's a bit dead giveaway, right? So this is actually in uh, non <laughs> non American places. This letter is Z, and I'm well aware of that. Uh, but in, Eng in America, it's uh, it's Z. You know, we just dropped that off. And, but at any rate, back in John D's day, it was neither Z nor Z. It was Zod. Okay, and it's just a vowel shift that went along with that. So at any rate, uh, so you have the English letter Saul. It's, it's spelled T-A-L. Okay. Uh, and then uh, here's the phonetic version of that. I actually did look this one up because I was wondering if there was a special way to connect that, and there is. So there, it's just the connected T, S, A, and L, okay, in IPA. Moving right along, uh, this is gone, and it actually has two variations. Uh, John D. put uh, a dot, or what he called a prick, <laughs> above that. And so, you know, but this would be the I version, and this would be the Y version. But really, it it's counts as one letter, basically. It's not considered a different letter. And that, so basically all of this 
of, there are 21 letters in the Enochian alphabet, and this is considered one letter. It's not, these aren't considered different letters. And you'll, you'll see this with languages sometimes. It's like the, in German, you know, you'll get the letter A, but then an umlaut, it's still considered the letter A. It's just, you know, changes the pronunciation. So this is a, the letter's name is Gon, G-O-N. Pronunciation is the same, you know, like Gone Girl. So you might put an E at the end, Gone. And then that's the pronunciation, Gone. Okay. And that upside down C looking thing. That's how you make the ah sound, like frog. Okay, next is the letter na. And this is, so the letter is na. But there's also, interestingly, Aaron Leach points out that in D's notes, it's, it's N-A, possibly T-H. So uh, maybe it's like nach or nach. You know, it's hard to say which one of these it is. Um, he pronounces it, he says in his uh, dictionary, it's not N-A-H. So at any rate, this is the letter, this is used for the letter H. So if you're just making a word that ha sound, you know, with a ha sound, you would go ahead and, uh, and use this letter. Okay. You would use the letter na to make the ha sound. And again, here are the different very, you know, if you were to say nath, it would be like this. If you say to say nach, it would be like that, but if just na, it would be this. The next one is the Enochian letter our. So it's spelled U R, but it's pronounced pronounced our, like our you know our friends and our family, or you know our. Now is the winter of our discontent, right? So this makes the L sound though. So even though it's pronounced U R. And, you know, most nowadays we would probably pronounce that ur, and instead it's pronounced our, okay? So if you're making, if you have to say the name of this letter, you say it's the letter our. And I'll do a review at the end. And at any rate, here's the IPA spelling for that, our. Next one is the Enochian letter mals. This one's kind of interesting because it's pronounced, it's spelled M-A-L-S. You might say malls, like let's go, like there, there we, have, we have seen a decline of several malls across the country because people don't go to malls anymore. M-A-L-L-A-S. But in this case, it's really, it's actually, the pronunciation is supposed to be ch, ma, ach, that sort of thing. So machls, but it's, it's one syllable. <laughs> so really, you're just better off probably pronouncing it malls or malls. You know, something like that. It's almost impossible to go machos. You would not. You would. You'd say m a c h e l s, something like that. And the pronunciation would be like this. I'm gonna just suggest going with malls. You can try. You can try to make machos sound like one thing, but it's always gonna sound like two syllables. It's just the way it goes. The next one is jur, and that's this letter. It makes the q sound, the qu. And just as a side note, there are a lot of Enochian letters where it's like um, Q-A-A, and it's, you're supposed to pronounce it Qua-A-A. So the Q back in John D's day was more of a letter Qua. That's sort of what it was called, but we've sort of have changed it around as, as with the passage of time. So at any rate, the, the Enochian letter Jer makes the Qua sound, and it's equivalent to the English letter Q, okay? Uh, and then I'll do, I'll do a quick wrap up actually talking about whether or not you can uh, just substitute Enochian letters uh, for English words. Like if I wanted to spell my name, it would be the, our, gone, or, or. And the answer is maybe for a name, but not if I wanted to, to say dog, I wouldn't say, you know, gall, med, jed. You wouldn't do that. It just isn't, you know, there, you would have to find the actual angelic name for it, right? Just like you can't just substitute, you know, um, this into like Cyrillic alphabet, English, and just substitute each letter. No, there are different words with different spellings that mean the same thing in English, but you can't just substitute, you can't just transliterate it word, letter for letter. Okay, so this is the letter jur. It makes the qua, qua sound, even, you know, it used to be the letter Qua, now it's Q. But at any rate, the letter jur, and here is how you spell that out. Next is drukes. 
it's spelled out D-R-U-X, it makes the N sound, the letter N. It's equivalent to the English letter N. Drux, and here's how you would pronounce it. This one is the letter PAL. You know, like this, so-and-so is my friend, they're my pal. It's the equivalent of the English letter X, but it's, it looks like this. And again, pal, not too complicated. I'm going to go through these examples a little bit quick, quicker now because you kind of get the idea. So the English letter O, the equivalent in Enochian is med, med as in medical, boom. Next one is don, the equivalent of the letter R, don, don, boom. Next one is the letter kef. It's been spelled out C-E-P-H, but that's because the, you know, if you remember, the is the word for C or K. This letter is, it can take on either one. You know, just like my name starts with the C, but really, if you, if you started with a K, it would make, it would sound exactly the same, okay? So that's the reason why, and, and this letter, the, covers both of those, so they just combined them. So that's why here you have this this alternate spelling. I always just go K-E-P-H if I'm going to do that, but I wanted to show that you might see both spellings. So this, as I kind of mentioned before, it's the equivalent of the letter Z. If you're speaking, if you learned the English, al the alphabet in English, or Z, if you learned it maybe in Canada, some Canadian schools, I'm sure, probably just substituted in Z if they had an American instructor or just whatever. You just got to know. It's either Z or Z, right? Used to be Zod, Z-O-D, but now it's either Z or Z. So that's what that looks like. But the name of the letter is actually Kef. The, the Enochian letter, the English letter, is its name is Z. And it makes the Z sound. Kef is how this is... Um, or in Leach's spelling of the pronunciation, and this is the IPA. Obviously, I kind of just want one single. I'm hoping that Aaron Leach, when he republishes the Angelical Language, both of those books, that he will adopt the IPA, or at least uh, have an alternative, an IPA in there. It really is due, due for an update, a second edition, because um, the, I've noticed like the Kindle version you can't read it on the web browser reader. And so it would be really nice to just, you know, rework that and get it updated. But it's still a very good book. You just have to read it like on the Kindle or the Kindle app, but not as good uh, reading it in the browser. Just an outdated thing. So this is the letter van. It's the equivalent of the letter U or V or W. And this is very in line with like Latin, right? where, you know, the V, you know, you, you might see the name Tiberius, it ends in V-S instead of U-S, right? Well, what's that? Well, it's because the V and the U are the same. So this is very much in line with that. So this is the letter van, but it makes the U or the V or the W sound. Don't see too many Enochian words where they have the W sound. Um, just from my experience, I can't really think of one off the top of my head. But anyway, it's the letter van. It's the it's the Enochian letter van makes these sounds. It's the equivalent of these letters. Aaron Leach's pronunciation and IPA spelling of that. And then the letter, the English letter S has an Enochian equivalent of fam. Makes the same sound. S. Fam. Boom. Fam. Same thing. And then finally, we get to the letter T. Uh, in English, and the Enochian equivalent of that is Gij. So it's spelled G-I-S-G, -G, if you, you know, transliterate Enochian letters to English letters, but it's pronounced Gij, okay? So letter T, Gij, this is Leach's pronunciation, and this would be the IPA spelling, okay? So I just wanted to show you some of these letters as they're actually spelled out, and I'm uh, facing west, so the, now there is some variation in terms of like which God names are associated with which, um, with which direction. This is as close as I, I can get it. I'm pretty sure that this is probably the way it should be, but regardless, you get the same names of God. Now each, uh, direction has three names of God across 12 letters, but here you can see 
This Enochian is spelled from right to left. You will see it going the other way, so just be aware. But this would be O we P T A A P D O K, right? So these are names of God. And, and boy, am I getting tired holding that camera up because it's been a long day. Um, but I wanted to mention uh, that you can't, you wouldn't just, you know, use the Enochian letter G or Jed. You wouldn't say G med gall as in order to spell God. You wouldn't do that. You would instead, there are these Enochian names of God that you would use. So why is that? They have, it's, it's almost like in, you know, there is sort of, it's sort of like how, um, how Hebrew has different names of God and he's not, he, you know, obviously in, you know, if you're speaking to somebody who's, you know, is talking about the Hebrew names of God or Judaism in general, they might, you know, they might use the name God because we're speaking English to each other. But if they're actually saying the prayer, they're going to use one of the older names of God, you know, Adonai, so on and so forth. So just be aware uh, that you wouldn't, you, you couldn't then take Hebrew and use their equivalent, you know, you can say Gimel, uh, Vav, and then um, Dalet, and say, well, I'm saying God, right? No, no, that's not how it works. Like, then you will, you will very much give yourself away as somebody who doesn't, who knows the Hebrew alphabet, but not much else, okay? Or the Aleph bet. All right, so I just wanted to, I guess that went a little bit longer than I figured it would, but I wanted to mention um, that as a as just an overview of the alphabet and get yourself used to that. I am going to just recommend one more time, and I'll put it at the link in the notes, the Angelical Language Volumes 1 and 2. It really is kind of the best resource. Aaron Leach has just done a very, very good job with that, trying to reconstruct, very deliberate. He's not only gone over the actual notes in the diaries, he has done the very pain painstaking process of going through all of Liber Loga. And that's a whole other topic in and of itself. I've kind of touched on it in previous videos, but let me just tell you, that is a very long deliberate process and he did it. So that's like A plus plus work right there. Okay. So it's very good work. Um, so at any rate, you get the idea, use the Enochian letters, to make Enochian words, not English words, and you'll and and just get used to that. And you can already see that there's a little bit of a different pronunciation going on with all of those. And you know, you'll really using Aaron's book has been very helpful to me in terms of just getting used to you know, how do I make these sounds? How do I do this? How do I, how do I do that? It's pretty good. I do hope that in the next edition, if there is one, that he will go with IPA spelling just so that it can broaden out and be much more accessible to people who aren't native English speakers like myself. And with any luck, that will happen. So yeah, that's my recommendation though, is really going with that. If anybody has time, you know, I mean, I've done some of this work. But I do think probably the best next step with this, I've done some of this and I may just keep going, but I do recommend whoever has time actually making those translations uh, of the Enochian calls in particular into IPA, into the International Phonetic Alphabet. It just is, it just makes something much more accessible. So that's it until next time. Cliff from Enochian today. Okay, bye.